Everybody wants one. Anton said, uh, what part of the movie would you like to do? And I said, I'd like to be involved with the best prop ever made for any movie, and that's the Batmobile. And he says, you got it. And that's what I did. My favorite gadget? Well, my favorite was the uh, Batmobile. I mean, that was uh, a treat for us to build something like that. The design of the Batmobile was Anton first baby, really. He had been thinking about this probably four months before I even joined the project, and he had rough sketches of it. Ford was bidding for it at one time, and I was very nervous they were going to get it, but uh, they didn't, they couldn't do it in a time factor. They wanted six months. We built it in 14 weeks, which is quite a feat. John Evans, who was special effects, decided we'd build it onto an existing old car. But what we had to do, of course, to get the design of it, and Nigel Phelps with uh, Anton came out with pencil lines, and, and then I would draw it up, and uh, they got a modeler in who made a little moquette, like a little clay model. And then Anton and Tim would come down looking, because it was an important thing for the film. Uh, they'll make it a bit longer here, do this, do that with it. And we eventually come with the final thing, and they said, that's it, that's what we're going to do. We both kind of went, yeah, you know, because it, it, it made us kind of laugh because it was tough, but it was kind of perverse. It had a weird quality to it that I can't quite put my finger on, but it still had the bat kind of motif to it, but something else, just an aggressive thing. The first thing, the most important thing, is to come up with a design that works from the outside. Then you can deal with the practicalities of like, you know, how to get into it, you know, what's driving it, you know, how do we get flames out of it? All of those things, no logical part of the process. We had to have it sculptured out in polystyrene to get the shape. You know, when it's first sculpted, I mean, you're seeing this big white blob of polystyrene. <laughs> it's like, oh, it looks pretty good. Isn't it? Tim Burton looked at me and he said, great, where's the door? and the whole thing was made without a door. It was just in polystyrene. And I said, well, ah, that's a good point. It's only when you've got the form working and the shape working that you realise that, well, it's going to have to be, either the, the cab is going to have to hinge up or slide forward. I had been in a Harrier jump jet, and that's how the idea of the hood slid forward. That was the way that they got out. The detail of the window was derived from, like, a gun emplacement, and there was, like, these little slitty windows, a pair of slitty windows, like, hmm. <laughs> have it completely done in fiberglass. A specified paint job was done on it, which took 10 days, probably. We had our chassis built, and we put it on, and it fitted like a glove, first time. So that was wonderful. There was only about six inches clearance between the ground and the bottom of the car. One of the you know, psychological things with it was that John put in, I think it was like a Chevy Impala engine, so it sounded great, you know. We took it from there to the test track. We got 90.5 out of it before it started to shake. You know, you have paparazzi everywhere, but I mean, you have people trying to take photographs of the Batmobile for the first time. You didn't have the internet, you know, with the, all the sites now that post everything. You had the newspapers, so uh, yeah, we had quite a bit of that. From the word go, it always looked really good and there were some nice details that Terry found. I think like the petrol cap was from like a London bus. I was at home one day and I was trying to think of the headlights. What could we do? And my wife had a Honda Civic. And I see this, this, this. I thought, oh, I could use those. I'll put them upside down. That'll work. One comment that Tim made about that was, we're too white, can you get the yellow ones? So all I did was just paint them yellow. And that's exactly what we used. Anton was saying that, you know, the big exhaust pipe, which I was thinking about because of the afterburners on jets. So I suggested that thing. And then we had the rear lights. He said, well, everything's round, they're round exhaust pipe, so we should have some round back lights, you see. So instead of having them made, which is far too expensive, I was thinking we'd just get some, it's all ready off a car. The Ferrari had round ones. 
So I contacted Ferrari and we got the round ones, and the round ones stuck them on the end. Then we had to incorporate the gadgets. So we had two Browning machine guns either side. And we had the grappling gun, which used to fire out on the left-hand side. It all had to be tested in all difficult things. Hood slides. And there's two ears sticking out of the top of the... We hadn't accommodated the four inches of his back ears. So that was quite funny after, not on the actual day. Tim was saying, well, lower the seat. I said, Tim, we can't lower the seats anymore. It's right down the bottom. We can't do anything about it. So I believe they made a new hood with slightly shorter ears. The afterburner had to look like a, a jet engine firing up, really. So in the end, we finished up with bumping petrol and paraffin in a mixture and getting the burn and gas. And it was quite effective. I thought, in the end, it looked quite good. The Batmobile, I thought, was incredible. I mean, far better than anything that came later because it had a real honest look. It looked like it was tough. We only had one. And the first time I saw the Batmobile came on the call and it was going sideways and so on. And I thought, this is it. I'd be on the phone to the producers saying, you know, if I was you, I'd get another one. But the, the driver just about corrected it in time because it really wasn't that roadworthy. It could actually go much faster than what uh, the, the amount of room we had, you know. Just by the time it got up to speed, you know, it's like uh, you're off the studio a lot. But I did drive it. I think I got up to a speed of about 75 miles an hour. I thought the car was going to take off. And I can tell you, when you're driving the car, because it's left-hand drive, um, the bonnet seems to go on forever. I did drive it. For a second, I, th I don't think they wanted me to drive it, giving my, my driving record. Um, yeah. I remember when we did the chemical factory, and it was just supposed to be a little tiny car chase. You know, but once I saw that Batmobile, I said to Tim, you know, we've got to, you know, we did, we did a whole sequence instead of just a couple of shots. chemical factory scene with the Batmobile was a tricky situation for us in the fact that we had so many elements with the uh, Batmobile charging through the chemical works. Had to be doing 30 miles an hour. Explosions going either side of it. We started off with two or three shots. We probably ended up doing 15 or 20 to make a whole sequence, you know. And it, uh, it's all in the film, which is always quite nice. Even though it seems insurmountable, you always uh, get it done. When you see something that you've been living with for about four months, and you see it's sprayed up, you see all the gadgets in it, you sort of went, well, this is definitely everything I thought it would be. Big movie, and wonderful, I mean, Batmobile, all the effects we had to do, I mean, it's a challenge. So it's quite a feat, you know, we're quite proud of that.